Hi there, I hope you're staying well and drinking enough water. We're on number nine of the scene series, can you believe it? Today we're gonna to be painting a scene from ET. This was suggested by my friend Mel. If there's anything you'd like to see me paint, just pop it down below in the comments and I might pick yours in future. For today's episode of the scene series, this is the scene that we're going to be painting. We're painting a scene from E.T. today. E.T. came out in 1982 and I thought it was older than that, I'm not sure why. It was directed by Steven Spielberg and it's still one of his biggest movies to date. The film is about an alien that accidentally gets left behind on Earth and befriends some children that keep him hidden whilst also teaching him some human traits before then reuniting him with his family of aliens. There are some spoilers in this video so I'm just going to warn you now if you haven't seen E.T. But it is one of those films you should watch. I've seen it a lot in different parts but somehow I always managed to miss the beginning. So I think this is the first time that I watched it the whole way through that I remember. It is kind of overhyped because it's a classic. Sometimes if you watch classics a lot later on, it's hard to not be kind of disappointed because you're expecting so much. What was surprising is how dark the movie is, both visually and thematically. The movie is often quite difficult to make out, especially in the woodland scenes, Though I know that's probably in part because of budgeting and special effects. It also has dark themes and is honestly quite a scary movie. The opening scene of E.T. being left behind is pretty scary, especially if you're a child. And I know for a fact that the scenes with the government testing has actually scarred children. Not to mention they actually kill off E.T. for a good while too. Spoiler alert. The family was actually nice, which you don't seem to get much of nowadays, so that was quite nice. They all seemed to support each other, the mum didn't call the government, and the older brother and his friends supported without any questions. So I understand how it's a lovely family movie. I didn't remember just how funny the film was, with E.T. hobbling around the mum without her seeing him, to him falling over after the camera flash. The humour didn't feel forced and added some much needed lightness to the movie. What I did notice watching this as an adult is that the government weren't actually the villains. Even before they found and captured E.T., he was still very sick and dying. Elliot blames the scientists for when E.T. dies, but they were legitimately trying to save him and did not perform any invasive or damaging procedures. Like, they tried to stop them from escaping. But they did also try and improve his health. And honestly, even though I knew this was a nice family film, it did cross my mind at this point that the big bad government people could have just killed off the boy to save E.T. They didn't, but I'm currently watching American Horror Story and that's something that would happen over there, so it did cross my mind. This film has been and will continue to be considered a classic. It's a heartwarming story with a classic happy ending. There aren't any major lessons to be learned, it's just as simple as be good. And it's a lovely family movie, even if a little bit scarring. After painting a zoomed out shot of a very small face entangled, I decided to push myself even more with this scene and paint an actual portrait of two people. Well, a person and an alien. Which doesn't sound like a push because I do tend to paint portraits quite often. But there's something kind of scary about painting a real person, a real recognisable famous actor in a famous scene, especially when you'd like the scene to look like the iconic scene that you're painting. I picked this scene because of the dramatic lighting. The scene I chose is right at the end of the movie as Elliot and E.T. are saying goodbye to each other. One of the other options I had was the scene where E.T. is hiding in between all of the toys. I thought that would have been a really cool one to paint. But I ended up going with this one because of the dramatic lighting. It's a dark scene at night time with red light reflected below. The light is coming from E.T.'s glowing heart and kind of bouncing off the red jumper too. From an artistic standpoint, it's a really interesting portrait to paint. It's two characters with harsh red lighting and a dark brown blue background and shadows. 
However, I don't really have much experience at all with lighting, so this was a challenge. Something I want to work on, which to be honest, I probably should have set as one of my art goals for this year. I set 15 goals in that video, which I'll leave below, and I'm not doing very well so far. So giving myself extra goals on top is probably not the smartest idea. Saying that, I would really like to work on anatomy, facial structure, understanding muscles, everything I need to get human proportions correct and accurate. I'd also like to work on lighting, learning how light hits the face from different angles, where it's reflected and where shadows come from. There might be something that we work on together in a future art vlog. The hope is that once I've gotten a better grasp on human anatomy and understanding lighting, I can create more dynamic portraits. I like the way I sketch faces now, most of the time. Both 100 heads challenges that I did really helped me figure out what I did and didn't like about the way I sketch faces. The second challenge particularly was crazy, I drew 100 faces in one day and it was insane. I'll leave that video below if you're interested. A lot of the faces I did were wonky and long and didn't look anything like the reference because they were drawn in two minutes. But I liked a lot of them and I could see why and what parts I liked. And I do see a lot of similarities with the way I drew faces in that challenge to the boy's face in this painting, so I think that challenge helped. I want to be able to create fun, interesting portraits with crazy lighting and surreal aspects and cool funky poses and facial expressions, but those things can only be consistently done well if you know the correct proportions. Otherwise, it looks like a cool idea that was executed poorly, so I need to understand the practicality behind it all. I decided to keep the background even more simple, so that the focus would be on both characters. It's an emotional scene, and I wanted some of that to come across. I'm also a little bit lazy when it comes to adding backgrounds. I don't really enjoy adding landscape details, and my personal preference always leans towards the blurry look. Just because I'm using watercolour and it's one of the best traits that watercolour has. If you're using a medium, you might as well make the most of it and use it in the best way you can. For this reason, I like using wet on wet in my pieces, as well as adding water blooms because that's what watercolour does best. I actually only used about 4 or 5 colours for this piece. Obviously the red shade, which is cadmium, my most red paint. I used the same red shade for the skin tone along with a yellow and blue to make it cohesive and then I used that same blue for the background again to bring the piece together. Plus I also used the yellow to add some highlights to the top of both the characters. Whenever I create these paintings for the scene series I try to limit myself with the number of colours I use. One trick I've learnt that helps is that rather than spraying the entire paint palette before beginning, like I used to do, now I just wet the colours I need as and when I use them, and I use a paintbrush to do this. I've also found this helps prevent the paints from cracking and eventually falling apart in the palette because they're not being completely re-wet as often. I think before when I wet all of my paints, I felt like I should use them because they've already been wet, so I might as well, which led me to using more colours in my pieces and they ended up not as cohesive. What do you do with watercolour? Do you wet your paints first or do you just wet and grab each colour as you use them? I'm curious. This painting, honestly, this painting, I actually love how this painting's turned out. The dramatic lighting with bold red and yellow, plus the harsh shadows, it's something I've never done before but now I want to incorporate it into all of my paintings. I'm really happy with it and though I struggled to trust the process, I think I managed to somehow pull it all together. What do you think? Do you think the dramatic lighting works? I think it looks pretty cool. 
I don't think either character is super realistic, but I do feel as though I've painted them in my own art style, which is crazy to say considering I've spent years not having any form of art style. If you've watched any of my older videos, you will know what a struggle this has been. This one and every other painting in the scene series is now up on my in-print store as prints and stickers if you're interested. And if you've missed any episodes, I'll leave the playlist down below along with the store. In the next episode, we're going to be painting a scene from an older live-action Disney movie, so make sure you're subscribed if you don't want to miss that. What films or shows would you like to see me paint? Let me know in the comments down below and I might add yours to the list. I also like the idea of doing the occasional sketchbook session based on a movie or TV show, a little bit like what I did with Movie and After Christmas, so that could be something else. Thank you to Mel for the suggestion of E.T. It was lovely to rewatch it again after so long. I really hope you've enjoyed watching this video and if you have then please consider leaving a like, it really helps my channel. Thank you so much for being here, enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you on Sunday with a new video. Bye bye!